Good afternoon and thank you for coming. As um, Maria already said, I started my PhD studies last year with a three-year scholarship by La Caixa Foundation. And I'm conducting my research project in conservation biology under the supervision of Marta Rueda and uh, Eloy Villa. The, the main idea of the, of the project is to develop a new tool to quantify uh, the vulnerability to extinction of, of species. So uh, we can start with the question. So why is it important to quantify the vulnerability to extinction? The, the answer is that this is uh, fundamental for an efficient allocation of the limited conservation funds that are available in conservation of biodiversity. Uh, we can say that we, we know that life on Earth uh, is suffering the most severe crisis of the last 65 million years, uh, and a, a mass extinction. And this process of endangerment starts with the extirpation of populations and with the decline in uh, population abundance. Uh, over time, this led to, to the extinction. So if we know, for example, which species is uh, closer to, the, to this final point, that is the, the extinction, uh, we can in invest more, more funds on these species, on these more endangered species, um, and try to have more chances to, to, to reduce the loss of biodiversity. Um, since the 90s, um, several authors um, have developed, uh, have developed uh, different methods to assess the vulnerability to extinction. Um, and all these methods, methods have some pros and some cons. For example, the safe index uh, that is based on the number of individuals of a, of a species that still exist. Um, for example, it, it, this method only assesses one dimension of biodiversity, that is the number of indivi individuals, but we know, for example, that there are other dimensions that are important, for example, the pressure that are acting on, uh, on species. Uh, furthermore, this, data for this index, for example, we can compute this index just for, some, for a few species because we don't have this data for a lot of, uh, of, of taxon. Um, other, ind other indices, for example, these two, the Summon Index and the Conservation Priority Index, um, assess their vulnerability to extinction on a multi-dimensionally um, multi multi because they sum together uh, different variables, for example, the distribution, uh, the use of the habitat, but also uh, the human pressure, for example. Um, the problem is that these indices um, assess variables not on a continuum scale, but on a, but on a categorical scale. Uh, for example, for the distribution, for the, for the distribution uh, if a species is dis it distributed all over the continent, they are seeing uh, a value uh, of zero. Uh, see if, for, and for example, for a, for a, very, for a, for a narrow uh, distributed species, they assign a value of three, but um, we, lo we, lo we, lo we lose information we lose information during this process of categorization. Another um, very uh, known system to access the, the vulnerability to extinction is the UCN classification system uh, that is the most widely used. It used to, it used to, the, to generate the, the red list of threatened species. And uh, it's basically is based on uh, population data, population size and trends, and distribution data, for example, the, ge the geographic range extension or uh, the, the, the trends in the, in the size of the geographic range. They use this data to uh, classify species into one of several categories of risk that, goes from, that go from least concern to, to critical endangered or extinct. Mm, what is the problem with, 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 with these indexes? Mm, that, to our knowledge, there are no indices that assess vulnerability on uh, multidimensionally, uh, uh, that is considering different dimension of, of, of vulnerability, uh, and mm, contemporary on a, on a continuum scale. Uh, this translates into loss of information when you try to use these indices, for example, into a prioritization analysis, because, uh, for example, the UCM system create, creates uh, few big blocks of species, but we, we cannot understand uh, within, a, within a, a category which species are more vulnerable. The, um, they seem to be all uh, equally vulnerable with the system. So uh, yes, there are some methods already. There are already some methods, but um, 
we think that there is, there is room for a, for a multidimensional index uh, to assess vulnerability. Uh, vulnerability is a multidimensional pheno phenomenon. Uh, a, a part of vulnerability is due to species traits that make a species more vulnerable than another. And um, for, this, for the same intrinsic vulnerability, there are the anthropogenic threats that act on species that can increase or uh, decrease the, 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 the risk of extinction of species. So these two are the, the two main uh, dimensions of uh, vulnerability, species traits and anthropogenic threats. But we also thought to add a full third dimension, that is the uh, amount of available information on species, because the, ra the rationale here is that uh, the more we know about the species, uh, the higher is the probability that the, co the index value is correct. So, uh, with this idea in mind, we structure the, the thesis as follows. Uh, there will be a first chapter that will be an introductory review on the existing assessment tools and of the pros and the cons of these tools as to, to, to put in context the development of my index. The second chapter will be the, about the development of the, the, of the three-dimensional index of vulnerability. There will be a third, cha third chapter that is a, an application of the index of vulnerability uh, in, in conservation planning. A fourth chapter, uh, we'll, I will use the index to predict the vulnerability trends in the future. And uh, the chapter number five is the development of an alternative productivity-based index of vulnerability. Uh, I will uh, explain the advantages to, to use the, this simplified version of, of, of the index of vulnerability. So I already talked about the, um, the state of the art about the, the indices of vulnerability. So I will, I will skip to the chapter number two. Um, the process of building uh, a multidimensional index can be resumed into four steps. The first one is the development of the theoretical framework that basically means to define what is being measured by the, by the index and which are the subcomponents of the index. I already said uh, that we are going to measure uh, vulnerability uh, and uh, subcomponents will, will be the, the three uh, dimensions. The, the step number two is the selection of the variable uh, that will be included in the index. For the dimension of the species traits, um, I choose uh, these four variables uh, that are considered in the literature as predictors of vulnerability. So for example, for the adult body mass, we know that uh, larger species uh, are more vulnerable to extinction, for example, because they need uh, wider uh, ranges to survive, because they have slower, slower um, life cycle, and uh, so they have a slower uh, turnover population. For uh, generation length, we also know that um, the, higher gener the, the, the longer is the generation length, the higher is the vulnerability, because these species um, take, take more time to, uh, for the turnover of the population, so to recover from, this, from, the, from the loss of individuals. The third variable is the population density. The, uh, the, the higher is the population uh, density, uh, the, the lower is the risk of extinction, basically because in the same area there are more individuals. And the fourth, the fourth trait, trait is the, geographic, the range size. Uh, this is quite intuitive. Mm, the larger the, the range size, the lower is the probability to, to, to go extinct because there are more individuals, there are more possibility to, to uh, avoid the, the pressures, the human, the anthropogenic pressures. So I collected data from several publicly available sources. And as regards the second dimension, that is the, the intensity of the anthropogenic threats, I consider the, these three main uh, th threats on biodiversity. That are uh, the habitat loss, the overexploitation, and the introduction of, of invasive species. The, the index is, is still um, a work in progress, so um, probably we, I, I could introduce or, or take away some of these variables. This is just preliminary. Um, as regards the habitat loss, uh, I thought to quantify uh, the vulnerability due to this factor 
uh, as the extent of suitable habitat that is still existing uh, within the range of species. As regards overexploitation, um, I used the number of individuals internationally traded that uh, is um, extracted from the CITES uh, data set for a, um, for a time frame of 10 years. Mm, I think that this could be a good proxy of the, of the degree of exploitation of species. Mm, it's, it's difficult to, to know how many species, for example, are uh, hunted or, uh, or gatorated, but uh, we can know easily how many, how many individuals are traded. And as regards the introduction of invasive species, um, I thought to, to use the variable, that this, the, the, this is a map of the uh, th threat of invasion of the, of the global land masses based on the characteristic of the, of the sites, for example, the intensity of traits or the, the climatic characteristics of the sites. So uh, I would like to calculate the average degree of threat invasion within the range of each species. And as regards the, the amount of, av of available information, uh, I've used the number of occurrences that are, uh, co that are present in the JBIF database for the same uh, time frame of the, the, of the, um, of the, of the, of the over-exploitation from 2008 to 2017. So um, we can move on to the third step, that is the, the variable normalization. Um, we can sum up together variables that have, that have different scales. So the, the, these steps is fundamental to rescale variables fr from, a, from, a from a predefined scale. So I choose the, this scale from 1 to, uh, to 100. Um, and the first step is the variable aggregation. Mm, I, I aggregated variables within uh, each dimension and then aggregate and then aggregated uh, the three dimensions to, aggreg to, to aggregate variables and the dimension I use the geometric mean so I calculated the geometric mean of this of these variables after normalization and I obtain the first dimension the same for the second dimension for the third for the third dimension as I have only the one variable this is just the normalized variable uh, so, um, through geometric mean, I calculated the, the species-specific index value. Here, um, you can see uh, some preliminary results. Um, I calculated the, the species-specific value of the index for uh, the 20% of species of mammal, or global mammals because uh, just 20% of species have data for all the variables we have seen before. Uh, for, the other for the other species, I just again just calculated uh, the index with the subset of, the, of these predictors. And um, we, here you can see uh, how the, uh, wh when the, when the value of the index increases, um, so with, with an increasing value of the index, there is um, an increasing risk according to the UCN, the UCN classification system. I test the predictive, mo the, the predictive uh, ability of my model against the, the, system, or the UCN system. Uh, we can see the, the higher the value, the higher is the, is the, the, higher is the category of risk uh, of the UCN. Um, here we can also see that, for example, for uh, some species that are classified as a least concerned by UCN, the high attained uh, high values of the of the index of vulnerability. Um, this is interesting because this means that uh, through this index we can uh, we can detect species that could be um, classified um, could be classified in a in a in a, in a lower uh, category of risk. Uh, we can we can detect the divergences between the classification system of the UCN and, the, and my index, and um, the the gray line is not very evident, but there is a gray line that is about the the, the data deficient species. In fact, um, the system of the UCN requires uh, the, the availability of of data of, of detailed data sometimes. 
So uh, it's not always possible to, to calculate, to, 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 to classificate species. Uh, while he, this will be possible using my index of vulnerability, uh, we can see how the spread of, the, of this curve is higher than the others because in, the, in, this, uh, in this group of species, there are probably there are species from all the other categories. Uh, one of the applications of the index will be uh, to, calculate the in, to calculate the index value for data deficient species, species according to the, the, the UCN, and also to use a, a multinomial logistic regression model to predict the, to predict the, the, the category of risk of the UCN according to my uh, index of vulnerability. So, um, moving on to the third chapter. Uh, in this chapter, I will show some applications of the, of the index of vulnerability. Uh, the first application is the, the, I will generate a map, a global map of mammal vulnerability to extinction. Basically, uh, I will use a grid to calculate with a higher resolution, this is just illustrative, probably at 50 per 50, per 50 kilometers. And I will calculate the total, uh, the, the sum of the, the, the total index of vulnerability as the sums uh, of, of the index of vulnerability of every species occurring in each cell. Uh, and in this way, we can identify hotspots of mammal vulnerability and we can compare them to uh, with hotspots uh, emerging from other similar studies, for example, hotspot of threatened species according to the classification system of the UCN. And <clears throat> another application, I thought, is the use of the index to uh, select additional sites to include in the current protected area system to strengthen mammal conservation. Uh, this analysis requires uh, two sub-analysis. The first, so I, I thought to perform first a global mammal gap analysis. Uh, basically, this means to overlap the map of, protect, of existing protected areas uh, with the map um, of this, or species distribution to understand um, how well species are covered by existing protected areas. Uh, in this way, I can uh, detect gaps, gap species that are species that are not sufficiently covered by, by protected areas. Uh, through a conservation target I, I established uh, a priori. And once I have uh, the list of gap species, I would like to, to use the index to perform a site selection uh, tailored on the, on the gap species. Uh, this, this basically means uh, is something similar to, to, the, to, to, this, to, the, to the generation of the map, because using only gap species, I will calculate the total value of the, of the index of vulnerability for each cell, but using only gap species. Then I will introduce this information uh, together with the conservation target uh, in, a, in some algorithm that select the, that um, use some rules to, the, to select the minimal number, the near minimal number of, of cells to reach this target for all the, spe for all the gap species contemporarily. Uh, in other words, this means to use, the, to use the, the vulnerability to guide the selection of footer sites for the protection of mammals. Then, moving on to the chapter number four, the objective is to recalculate the index uh, under future and past scenarios of global land cover uh, change. Um, using, using a different map uh, of, of, of land cover, uh, we, can, uh, we can recalculate uh, one variable of the, of the index, that is the extent of suitable habitat. We can calculate this for the future or for the past. Uh, ob obviously, this, ch this affects the, the value of the index, and uh, calculating this on, this on different time points, we can um, extrapolate, for example, vulnerability trends among species. And this is, is particularly important because uh, it's not only important to understand which species are closer to, to the extinction, uh, but also which species are, get, are getting clo close to the extinction more slowly, because this could be also uh, more important, because uh, if, for example, we know which species are more, are more vulnerable, we can invest money on these species, but it could be too late. Uh, the chances of, of success are, are lower. Uh, 
while we know, while if we, if we know that a uh, species that nowadays is vulnerable but is not critically endangered, for example, we can, but that, but that in the future will be um, qui quickly uh, became, become, we kick, we quickly become uh, a critically endangered species. We can invest money in species and uh, maximize the chances of uh, success. And finally, uh, there is also a chap the chapter number five that is, um, well, we thought our index um, have, have some advantages. For example, uh, it can be useful to understand which dimensions is affecting most on the, vulnerabi on the total vulnerability of species. And this can, for example, um, make us understand which, which, conservation which conservation strategies is better. Uh, but uh, it requires um, enough da a lot of data. There are not too many variables, but these variables are not uh, available for all the species. Uh, for example, I could, calculate it, uh, I could calculate, uh, the complete index just for 1,000, about uh, 1,000 species. So uh, we thought about an alternative uh, that could be a complementarity, a complementary index that is an index based on the on the primary uh, primary production of vegetation. Uh, we know that humans um, humans um, uh, th there is a human appropriation of the net primary production. Uh, through the, the length, length, length cover change and through harvesting. Uh, and this li limits the, 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 quant the quantity of uh, energy that is available within ecosystems. Uh, my research group already tried to understand if the human appropriation, the, uh, the quantity of human appropriation on net primary production, it could be a good, a good predictor of vulnerability uh, for species, but uh, it doesn't work uh, very, well, very well. So uh, we, uh, we, we look at the problem from another point of view, and we uh, thought about to try with the remaining net primary production. Basically, uh, if, we know, if we know the remaining net primary production, we know the uh, energy that is, that is still available in the ecosystems after harvesting, after uh, habitat loss, uh, land cover change. Um, we, can, we can translate uh, this, this variable in the energy available in the, in the species range, we can calculate it, and we can compare it with, uh, with the body mass uh, of, uh, of, the, of the species, of the, of the adults of the species. Uh, basically, this means that if we know these two, these two data, we can, we can calculate a proxy of the number of individuals. The higher is the energy available, and the uh, higher is the number of individuals ca that the system can, can, sus can sustain. Uh, and, there is, and there is also an, in an inverse relationship with the body mass. So if we know the, uh, if we know, uh, the number of individuals, the approximate the number of individuals, you can calculate the, prob the probability of extinction as the reciprocal of this number of individuals. And we could use this, this system to, as, a, as a further predictor of vulnerability. And this is particularly useful because we can easily calculate the human appropriation or net primary production uh, compared to the to obtaining data from species that is a long term long term process. So it's helping.